talk about knowing God, growing in Christ, knowing Christ, growing uh, in Christ, and showing Christ. We also realize that we're an interesting church. Uh, some people can only be with us for one Sunday. Other people can be with us for maybe a semester of school. Uh, others are here for a longer extended period of time. Uh, in fact, today is, is an interesting day. There is a, a sweet person who's been participating with us during these times of COVID, but has never actually been with us in person in our worship services during these times of lockdown. And so she has, she has had her, quote, entire experience with us here in Budapest, uh, never actually meeting in person with everyone else like we would normally like to do. And today will be her final day. She's received permission to uh, go back to her home country. And that's another thing that happens in the life of our church. It's, it's just the nature of our church. Some people can be with us for one Sunday. Some people can be with us for a semester. Others are here for a longer extended season of time. Whichever category of that applies to you, uh, we're so glad that you're able to be with us today worshiping the Lord. Uh, we also are going to do something new today. At the end of our service, we're going to have a fellowship time where we're going to be divided randomly into different breakout, group, breakout rooms so that we can spend some more time uh, talking with each other in smaller groups of maybe five or six people and asking one another, how can we pray for each other as we go into this next week? So for those of you that are willing to help us today, please remember at the end of the service today, we're going to do something uh, different, something a bit more interactive, and we hope that you'll continue and join with us in that time. Uh, let's pray this morning as we continue our worship service. Father, we do thank you uh, for your love. We thank you, Father, for your provision and care. Uh, Father, one of the children prayed today thanking you that we're healthy, and Father, we do thank you for that. Lord, during these times of this pandemic, we continue to pray for your mercy and for your grace. We continue to pray, Father, for good health for our friends and loved ones. Father, we also pray for good connections. It can be so difficult during these days, and people are also dealing with says an honest witness tells the truth, a false witness tells lies. That was the memory verse for the month of February, Proverbs 12, 17. An honest witness tells the truth, a false witness tells lies. And even today during the children's time, they were introduced to a new memory verse. <laughs> Children, uh, Pastor Ed was watching too, Luke... Four. Oh, how do I do it correctly, kids? Four, eight. Okay, Luke four, eight is going to be our memory verse going into next month. So, adults, you can uh, you can get a jump on the on the program if you want to. We're also during this year celebrating our 30th anniversary as a church, and there will be more about that coming up in the upcoming weeks and upcoming months. As we continue with our time of worship today, though, this is one of those moments. We'll pause just two or three seconds and we'll switch the microphone to Nikolai as Nikolai continues today and leads us in song. Nikolai, we'll switch the microphone to you. Here we go. So then I thought of that one as would be really great as a startup. Let's do my life is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you. Bye. 
Next one is the uh, Lord I come and I confess. Well, the Bible says that we'd rather be uh, quick to the listen instead of a given offering. So, and uh, I don't know, there was a kind of mood and I thought of that. Lord, I confess, born he have to find my rest. Let's do that one. Lord, I come and I confess. Nikolai, as we continue a time of worship, we think about giving as the Lord has given to us. We return our gifts to him. And today, as we have a time thinking about tithes and offerings, our friend, our brother, Victor, 
will lead us in this time of prayer. Victor, if you would please lead us today. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to honor your word and show our appreciation as you are the good and perfect gift giver. Please accept this prayer and petition as well as the portion and, multi and multiply it for the purposes you know they are lovingly needed for. Bless us with trusting hearts and hearts as good stewards to understand all we have is yours and give us the wisdom to honor you with your blessing. In Jesus' holy name, I pray, amen. Thank you so much, Victor. If you have your own copy of scripture today, please find the book of James, James chapter 1. Today we will be focusing on verses 16 through 18 as we've been going week by week, section by section through the book of James. Also today, we want to make a brief uh, announcement, a, a brief uh, update for you. Of course, we're entering into the Easter season. And during the upcoming weeks, uh, one of our elders, Hennen, found a very nice resource that we can read as we prepare our hearts looking forward to Easter. Of course, that's several weeks away. Easter this, week, this year is on April the 4th. But we're going to be sending out a message that contains a link to a resource from a writer named Andrew Murray. Many people have heard of Andrew Murray uh, from years before. And we encourage you as we prepare our hearts, as we prepare our minds, as we're thinking about the upcoming Easter season, to read these devotionals. You'll, you'll be receiving a link that you can then go and see this resource online as well. Uh, today, though, coming back to the source of all blessings in James chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, perhaps you've had the same experience that I've had. You've been at the airport, you've got a flight, and as you're sitting on the airplane, it's dark, it's rainy, it's cloudy, it's not necessarily horrible weather, but it's very, very gloomy. And as you're sitting on that airplane, as you, as you hear all the announcements, as you lift your table to its upright and secured position, as you raise your seat up in the proper position, as you make sure that your seat, but your seat belt is buckled, you take off and you leave a place that's foggy or misty or gloomy or gray, and suddenly you break above the clouds and the sun is there, and the sun is shining. It's been shining all along, but when you were down there on that runway, when you were in that gloomy situation, you couldn't see the sun. You, you might have even forgotten for a moment that it was there. It was there all along, but it was just hidden from your sight. The good news of Jesus has many different components. As people talk about the message of the gospel, there are many things that come to mind. And even this week, I was talking with one of our brothers in the Lord about some of the thoughts that came to his mind specifically about the gospel. And I've been seeing what other people have been sharing Whenever you think about the good news of Jesus, whenever you think about the gospel message, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? Uh, as my friend and I were talking this week, he shared two very important thoughts that I definitely agree with. At a minimum, the good news of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, it always means this. Number one, there is forgiveness of sins. You and I can have forgiveness of sins. That is at the heart of the good news of Jesus Christ. Number two, our lives can be transformed. As we turn to Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, he gives us a new life. 
And that life is one of transformation, of hope, of joy, of peace. And number three, the gospel message means that we can begin living in God's kingdom right now. Yes, it will be ultimately fulfilled. Last week, we talked about three different theological terms. The forgiveness of sins or salvation, that is what's called the process of justification. As our lives are transformed, as we grow more and more into the image of Christ, that's the process that's called sanctification. That's part of being transformed, but that sanctification process that begins even now, now in this life, and then ultimately when we ourselves are resurrected to be with Christ for all eternity, there is the glorification that will ultimately be fulfilled. Today, as we continue looking in James chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, we remind ourselves that James was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. There was a time, and the Bible makes it clear, that James and his other siblings, they thought that Jesus was mentally delusional. And yet, after his resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, James became one of the first people to accept Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And James went on to be a leader of a church. As we read in James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, we see, though, immediately, James doesn't declare himself, he doesn't introduce himself by saying, hey, listen to me, after all, I grew up in the same household that Jesus grew up in, listen to me, after all, Jesus is my brother. No, we see immediately, James, his life has been transformed, and he shares many aspects of the good news of Christ, beginning by taking a humble stance. In James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, he says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. This brother in the Lord is writing to other brothers in the Lord. And he goes on to verse 2, and he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. What kind of trial are you facing today? Are you facing a trial within your family? Are you going through a difficult testing time, perhaps at your work? Is there a health issue that you're battling currently? It's interesting, isn't it? James doesn't say, oh, just put on a big smile and, and pretend that you're happy. No, that would, not be, that would not be true. That would be disingenuous. But instead, James says, count it all joy in the midst of the trials of various kinds. You and I are going through maybe very difficult situations, and we would choose to have a different uh, circumstance. And yet James tells us to count it joy when we go through these times. He continues with verse 5 and says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. In the midst of whatever trial you're facing today, ask God to give you the wisdom to see that trial as an opportunity to continue in your transformation, to continue to be molded into the very likeness and image of God, of Jesus Christ. That's our goal. You and I we are wanting, we are desiring to become more and more like Jesus. He is the example that we're seeking to follow and to be transformed like him. James goes on in verse 6 and says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. 
for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Yes, if we ask God for his help, then we need to follow God as he gives us his directions. We go on to verse 9, and James paints for us a contradiction, a paradox, if you please, something that goes against the standards of the world. In James chapter 1, verse 9, he says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. That's not the way the world works. The world gives honor to those people that are beautiful, those people that are powerful, those people that are rich, those people that are famous. And yet James, speaking to his other brothers, says, no, it's the lowly brother who can boast in his exaltation. Again, what is that exaltation? It is that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If a person has accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, their sins have been forgiven. They are a new creation. They are a new creature in Christ. And the lowly brother, now he can be exalted. In contrast, the rich, he should take an example to be in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. No matter what the rich are experiencing right now, if they do not have Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, no matter how powerful a person is now, no matter what kind of status they might have as a world leader, if they do not have Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, when their life is over, everything is gone. This is the contrast. The lowly brother who has Christ, he will be exalted. The rich, the powerful, the famous who do not know Christ, they lose everything when their life is over. He goes on to verse 12 and says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. This is where we must pause and continue to remind ourselves. James is talking to people who already are Christians. You cannot earn your salvation by works. Just because you go through difficult times, it doesn't mean that you're going to automatically go to heaven. But in contrast to that, if a person does know Jesus Christ as their Savior, no matter what trials they go through now, God will continue and bring them to that point of glorification. Right now, you and I are going through a sanctifying process. We're being changed more and more into the image of Christ. Last week, we looked specifically at verses 13, 14, and 15 also. James says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth to death. There is a very important distinction between testing and tempting. God never tempts anyone with evil. We ourselves, because of our own desires, are tempted to follow wrong things that we should not follow. Just to be tempted, that is not a sin. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus was tempted in all ways, and yet he remained without sin. You and I, after we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are no longer bound to be slaves to sin. Yes, temptations may come, 
but God always provides a way out of those temptations. So while we are tested, and while that can bring about a good result in our life, temptation and ultimately sin, if we give in to that, only leads to death. Today, we look just briefly at verses 16 through 18. James says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Don't be deceived. Just because temptation comes, you're not bound to give in to temptation. That is your old life. As you accepted Jesus Christ, as you became a new creation, you have the power to put away those old things of life. Don't be deceived, my beloved brothers. We once were under condemnation, but now we've been reconciled to Jesus Christ. Now we can live a new victorious life. Brothers and sisters, during these days, are you and I following Jesus Christ, recognizing that every good gift, every perfect gift, in the original Greek language, there are some subtle nuances between the good gift and the perfect gift. In the Greek language, the good gift is more of when a good gift is being given. It is also a perfect gift. It is something that's coming from above. Where are all of the good things in our life coming from? They're coming from God, our Heavenly Father, the Father of lights. In these verses between last week and this week, there is that contrast. Whereas sin leads to death, God and his love and his mercy leads to life. He is going to give us every good gift, every perfect gift. And for these original people who were Jewish people, <laughs> that next verse, verse 18, it has such a subtle thing for you and I. Perhaps we don't grow. I didn't come from a Jewish culture. But for the original Jewish people who studied diligently the Old Testament, who followed diligently the practices of the Old Testament, there was a time that when harvest came, they took some of the very first fruits as part of the offering that they gave to the Lord. There was a time that they would bring together sheaves of grain. The first sheaf would be taken into the temple and would be waved as a wave offering, acknowledging that this good gift came from the Lord. There were two different times in the cycle of the year during the, during the biblical times that the Jews would do this. And James, a Jewish person himself, talking to his fellow believers, he's saying, remember this, just as we go to the temple and just as we give the first fruits, just as we give the first chiefs, that's what God has turned us into spiritually. We are the first fruits we've been brought forward by the word of truth. This is what God has done for us. Uh, <clears throat> please allow me to share a, <clears throat> a simple illustration from my childhood. When I was a child, my grandmother loved to have a very, very big garden. And my grandmother's garden was full of all kinds of vegetables. There were potatoes, there were carrots, there were radishes, there were rows of corn. And as a child, being near my grandmother, I would go with her from time to time into the garden. And when we went into the garden, as those new plants were bursting forth up out of the ground, my grandmother would look very, very carefully. And if there were small pieces of grass, if there were some weeds that had blown into the garden, she would carefully pull those pieces of weed, those pieces of grass away from those new plants that were growing. 
And then there were times that my grandmother and I, we would get down on the ground. We would sit on the ground and we would just shuffle along on the ground, carefully looking at every plant, examining every leaf to see if there were bugs, if there were insects that were damaging those new plants. And what would my grandmother do? And what did she teach me? be taken and they would be burned up. We don't have to live with sin in our lives. We are new creatures in Christ. The soil that nurtures plants, the rain, the early and the latter rain that comes, the sunshine from God above, in the same way that plants grow and mature and blossom, they don't have to be infected by sin. They don't have to be infected by bugs. When bugs come into the garden, what do you do? You take those bugs and you cast them away. You and I have that same opportunity given to us. We have been changed into new creations. We are developing, we are growing. If there is a sin in our life, we can confess that sin. We can turn from that sin and we can move forward with Jesus Christ. There was a time that we were sinners, but when we accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, our sins were paid for and we were turned. We were created as something new in him. You and I can have a life of power. You and I can have a life of victory. Whatever trial that you and I are facing, whatever difficulty that we're going through, God will use those trials to benefit us. And if we happen to be tempted, we don't have to give in to temptation. We can declare God's word to be true. We can follow his teachings in our lives, and he will help develop us into the new creation that he has created for us. Are you living a transformed life today? You don't have to let those bugs into the garden to eat everything up. You can put those things aside as you turn to Christ and follow him. The power of the gospel, it contains at least these aspects for us today. There is forgiveness of sins. Our old life is put away. Number two, there is victory over sin as a person accepts Christ as their savior. Number three, there is transformation of life as you've been planted, as you've been born again, as you have been joined with Christ, there is a transformation of life. And number four, life in God's kingdom begins now. Yes, there will be the ultimate glorification, but even now, you and I, as we turn to Christ in steps of obedience, he lets us experience God's kingdom even now. People are facing so many different emotions today. People are facing so many different anxieties and stresses. Again, in your own heart today, what are you facing? Are you dealing with loneliness? Are you dealing with fear? Are you dealing with frustration? Are there anxieties in your life? Of course, there can be all kinds of temptations, but you don't have to give in to temptation. Instead, you can turn, continue to turn to Christ. In John chapter 14, we remember that Christ was speaking to the disciples and he told them, let not your hearts be troubled, Believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We do know the way. The way to a victorious life is through Jesus Christ. The psalmist said in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. Are you facing a trial today, my dear friend? Ask for God's wisdom so that you can see how to count that trial as all joy. Are you facing a temptation today, my dear friend? You don't have to give in to that temptation. Your life does not have to be consumed with things like it was in the past. You can overcome anger. You can overcome lust. You can overcome jealousy. You can overcome fear. You can overcome anxiety. You do not have to be bound by those things in the past. Don't give in to that sin. It's not inevitable in your life. It does not have the power to rule over you. Bring those things to the Lord. He will cleanse you. He will help you. He will take you forward into this new life. Will it be hard? Of course. There are times that it will be very difficult, but God has given the power to live a transformed life. Whatever you're facing today, whether it's a testing of some kind or whether it's a temptation, turn to God and he will give you victory to move forward with whatever you're facing. Nikolai will lead us once more in a song. Nikolai? Hey. Well, talking of James and the beginning of this the chapter when you're getting into all trials, count it with joy. A lot of got to be added to it. So, and all of a sudden that song, when peace like a river, it's kind of beautiful story and it's like really emotional and it's really 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 deep compared to that we have nothing to say to that story of that guy whose name is uh, Horatio Stafford who lost like a job uh, he is uh, he lost uh, lost all of his wife all of all wife all of his children all of the life get <laughs> got died out of malaria afterwards and what what been written is like it is well with my soul, wonderful. So I'm gonna do like not really traditional way how that's supposed to be. So it's a little bit different this time. Oh, 
Satan should burn, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance come true that Christ has regarded my helpless estate. and sisters in the Lord, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have power, you have victory. If God's calling you to do something this week, you have the ability to be doing what God calls you to do. Bring your concerns to him. He will never cast you aside. He will always help you. He will lead you into this life that he desires for you to experience. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can hear about the good news, but it's going to sound strange and it's going to sound foreign to you. You can try a lot of ways to work your way to salvation, but they won't be successful. You can try to follow rituals. You can try to perform acts of service. You can try to even buy your way into salvation, but that's not how you'll obtain the good news of Christ. It's only by accepting the free gift of salvation. If you've never done that, please get in touch with us. We would love to share with you how you too can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And as you do that, you too can then begin to experience a transformed life. That is the good gift that God makes available to all, to all who will turn to him. Today, as we think about the community announcements, there are many activities in the life of our church. Uh, one of our chief ways of communicating with people is from our website. 
If you've never gone there and registered, please do. Also, please remember to help us on our Facebook page. There's a children's time every Sunday morning at 10.05. It's, it is so good. Uh, even as adults, I encourage you, if you have the ability to do it, uh, tune in to the 10.05 children's time. You'll, you'll appreciate it. Our dear brother in the Lord, Hernando, has multiple discipleship trainings that are taking place. Uh, if you would like to know more about this, please be in touch with us. Today, the young adults will continue to meet online. People between the ages of 18 and 30, uh, please uh, feel free to, to contact us if you don't know about this already and we can give you more information. That will be continuing today. Yesterday, there was a, a wonderful time for our ladies. It's called Connected in Christ. Uh, more than uh, 20 ladies participated yesterday in that experience. On a weekly basis, there is a women's Bible study that takes place at 6 p.m. Uh, please, for either activity, the weekly women's Bible study or the monthly event like, was, like the Connected in Christ event that took place yesterday, please be in touch with Preeti Stalder. Uh, get in touch with us and we can give you her contact information as well. Also on a weekly basis on Tuesdays, there's a prayer time online at 7 p.m. On Thursdays, there's a business fellowship that takes place. In the life of our church, from time to time, we have quarterly meetings. Our next quarterly congregational meeting is it's, it's uh, actually less than two weeks from now on March the 10th at uh, 8 p.m. via Zoom. We will be having our quarterly congregational meeting. Another resource that's provided for all of us is something called Right Now Media. It's called the Christian Netflix. Uh, because we are part of the International Baptist Convention, they make it possible for each of us to have our own individual account. If you don't have your individual account, get in touch with us and we'll let you know about that. Okay, uh, today is a day that we get to have some fun celebrations. I'm... <laughs> Uh, uh, boy, I need a lot of help on this because I can't, I can't watch all the different screens that are popping up. Okay. And so I don't, I don't know exactly how we need to do this, but 